Spartans, welcome back. Tyrant's Halo Infinite Legendary Walkthrough. You know the drill. No saves and no deaths. We are up to mission eight, Black Hawk Down. Pelican Down, different bird. Okay, different bird. Pelican Down. Anyway, you are gonna face not only one, but two bosses, Tavares and Hyperius. What's up everyone? It's the Tyrant here and it is New Year's Eve and I'm still not done with this damn walkthrough yet. Welcome back to Tyrant's legendary walkthrough for Halo Infinite. Today we're on Mission 8, Pelican Down. So we are on the third island today. It is, the island's actually called Graveyard. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. I didn't until like last night, <laughs> actually. Uh, so just to sort of bring you up to speed here, at this point... Uh, prior to engaging on this mission, I went ahead and gathered the rest of the Spartan cores. Uh, so you, in terms of upgrades at this point, your armor should be, or your armor core should be upgraded to the max, which I would highly recommend. Uh, the thruster pack should also be upgraded to the max. It's pretty much useless until you get that final upgrade, because then you actually get cloak or active camo ability each thrust. And you get to thrust twice. Uh, you get two charges before the cooldown, basically. And then you get the active camo with each one. And then my grapple shot is the second to last tier at this point. And my uh, threat sensor is only still upgraded to the the uh, second tier. Drop wall I haven't touched. It's... It's a very niche armor ability, which we'll we'll talk about later on in in a maybe a different video. But for now, you have three anti-air guns to take out, and I usually go for the one right here on the right hand side as soon as you exit the Pelican. Personally, I choose to go the less kosher route. They they try to lead you up there with a the road, and you can do that. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I'd like to take the cliffs instead and have a much better line of sight of the enemies. So just sort of a, an update here um, in terms of what I'm armed with. The battle rifle is my main weapon. I would highly recommend it. At this point, you should have enough valor to unlock it in your fobs. I've been capturing those as well. I think I've captured every fob available up until this point. And my secondary weapon is still the Scorpion Gun, which I, again, for my 2.0 Legendary Walkthrough, I will not be using the Scorpion Gun. But it's so easy to obtain now since selectable missions are a thing. It's like, why wouldn't you at this point? Even if you drop it by accident, you can just as easily go back to Outpost Tremonius and get it again. So, yes, those are my two main weapons. Again, if you're not using the Scorpion Gun for your own personal legendary journey and you don't want to wait for the 2.0 walkthrough, uh, <clears throat> I primarily primarily use this against vehicles and shielded enemies. And if you aren't using the Scorpion Gun, a nice backup weapon is the Pulse Carbine. Uh, down the road, that weapon will be exchanged for the Sentinel Beam. Speaking of the Sentinel Beam, by the way, I also have the Arcane Sentinel Beam, which can be obtained by fighting a high-priority target uh, in the Evacuation Site Island. So you can... Or not eva Evacuation Site. Excavation Site Island. Oh, getting my Halo Infinite missions mixed up with Halo 5, apparently. So, uh, so I'm climbing up purposely to the top of the cliffs here so that I can just get a nice vantage point um, and we can take this area out pretty easily. Uh, fun fact. Okay, so of the three anti-air guns, two of them, yes, you do have to activate a control panel first. Uh, and in both of those, there are snipers to deal with. In one case, there is a pair of hunters to deal with. In the third anti-air gun, and there's a Spartan core right there, so you can go ahead and grab that. There's five of them here, by the way. I'll go over that later. Um... In the third one, you do not have to activate a control panel, so you can either run straight towards... Oops, sniper. Uh, you can go straight towards the gravity lift, or you can actually drop down from the top, which we're going to do in this mission, and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to take this one first. I tend to go for this one because there's a few snipers here and ghosts. I feel like if things are going to go wrong, typically it's going to be within this particular tower or this particular anti-air gun. 
So I like to start here. So we're basically coming at them from behind. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, giggity giggity, I get it. So, all right, watch out for snipers here. There are a few. There's two notably uh, at the base of the anti-air gun. There's one on the far side as well. You may find a few over here. You see the brutes. Um, so there are a few outliers. So we're just trying to make sure this area is clear. Again, I, I tend to try to only use the scorpion gun against shielded enemies or vehicles. But apart, or objectives like that. But aside from that, uh, no. Uh, the Pulse Carbine is a perfectly fine secondary weapon. As I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, it's got the best of all worlds. It takes out shields like a regular plasma weapon. It hones in like a needler. And also actually can do headshots like a ballistic weapon. So that's pretty awesome. Never seen a plasma weapon do that in the entire history of Halo. So that's pretty cool. I guess we didn't sneak on him, sneak up on him quickly enough. But yeah, all right. So for the first anti-air gun, keep an eye on the snipers. They're going to be on those little hills below the anti-air gun. So there's the first one. The second one might be a little bit hidden. But yes, if you have not picked up all of the uh, Spartan cores at this point, prior to doing this mission, I would highly recommend doing so. Uh, at the start of the sequence, which is the next mission, I'd recommend going ahead and just upgrading the rest of your armor abilities by picking up the other Spartan cores as well. You can do that easily by capturing the other fobs. Then they should show up on your map. Between that and actually, uh, you know, completing the objectives. Uh, there are five Spartan cores here. And one of them might be masked if you don't take out the grunt propaganda tower so just keep that in mind so if you hear you know a grunt saying funny things even though they usually do anyway but you know out of characteristic of battle then go ahead and try to hunt down that propaganda tower take it out and you should be able to see the spartan core on your tack map so we're trying to take the quickest and most efficient route here there's a shade turret right there just go ahead and take that guy out there's the other sniper i was talking about and there should be a third one over there on the far left on top of the building just be aware of him there is the control panel right there where this is why i like to keep the grapple shot is sort of a there's the third guy um, so this is why I tend to keep the grapple shot as my default. Again, if you're very good at switching up your armor abilities very quickly, then you can switch to the thruster pack right here if you want to. I don't know why my game is doing this. The PC version. <laughs> um, you can easily use it to thrust to that gravity lift right there if you want to. Um, you don't need to do that, but uh, most of the enemies are going to be on the outskirts at this point. But it, once the gravity lift is activated, you can drop down technically from the top too. So we're going to go ahead and activate the first control panel here for the first anti-air gun. And we're going to be treated to a cutscene. And it's a lengthy one because Eshram loves to talk. He, he certainly does. Um, a lot. But given his fate in this game... <laughs> Uh, let's give him his time. So yes, you can sit back and take out all the enemies here or just take that route and, and take out the most essential ones. Uh, again, the, the main ones you need to worry about in this particular area are the ghosts and the three uh, jackal snipers here. I'm going to just... I keep calling them stalker jackals. Let's just call them jackal snipers because that's exactly what they are. They're not as powerful as Halo 2 jackal snipers, but they're still annoying. So I'll, I'll do that. Uh, once those guys are down, though, and you activate the control panel, if you want to, if you have your thruster pack, and you should at this point, upgraded to its top tier, then you should be able to simply just boost to it. Again, you get two charges with a thruster pack at top boost, as well as active camo uh, with each charge. So, and it, it lasts only a couple, uh, only like two or three seconds, but it's enough. It's enough to get you to where you need to be. So, I would highly recommend it here. It just depends on how you play. The only things that should not be fully upgraded here, yeah, again, like I mentioned earlier, my grapple shot is second to last here. 
uh, the final tier really isn't that important. Um, but you can get it if you want to, since we're going to begin Spartan Course in the next mission anyway, might as well. Drop Wall is a very niche uh, ability. Basically, it only really comes in handy if you're in a very tight space with most of your enemies in front of you, specifically uh, sniper-based enemies. And uh, finally, of course, uh, well, armor, the armor core is, you know, passive, but hi highly recommended. And then the, uh, finally, the threat sensor is only really going to be useful a little bit later. So those other ones, the, I would say that we're going to go ahead and take out this core right here with the scorpion gun and run right out here to our next tower. But as I mentioned, and this valley is pretty safe, by the way, so I would highly recommend jumping here. Um, but yes, yeah, so thruster pack, uh, armor, armor, spark, uh, your armor core, whatever, whatever they choose to name it here. I don't know. Your armor core, uh, thruster pack should be upgraded to the max at this point. Again, the grapple shot at least a second to last here and your threat sensor to at least level two, but that was covered in the tower slash recovery mission. So drop balls up to you. It, like I said, very niche ability. So now we're going to head to the second tower over here. This is the easy one. And, you know, I prefer just to take... There are additional Spartan cores. I'd recommend, if you don't accidentally run into them, just grab them as you go. Uh, if, if you're not grabbing them as you go, uh, once you're actually done with the mission itself, after you've killed the two uh, Spartan killers... Then you can come back before you start the sequence and get the other Spartan cores that you haven't gotten already. That's what I would personally recommend. At that point, that's, again, additional five Spartan cores. I actually have one left over that I have not upgraded or used for upgrades yet, which leads me to six. So I can use that for, um, you know, if I wanted to upgrade the drop wall for the early part of the next mission where they have snipers and banshees that's a possible option or i could choose to upgrade the threat sensor as well because there are some high ranking elites <clears throat> in the next mission and once you piss them off they do tend to cloak themselves so just keep that in mind as well it's completely up to you uh, drop wall might not be a bad option just for that opening sequence no pun intended and then you can of course get your other spartan cores later for those elites, if you like to upgrade the threat sensor. So again, taking the non-kosher route here and just going up the cliffside, avoiding all enemies. There are no fobs in this mission. There's no valor to my knowledge, aside from any maybe propaganda towers that you come across, because there's no uh, side missions or anything like that. So there's the second tower right there and for this one you again you can run straight to it and just run up the grav gravity lift or you can do what we're going to do here and that's see that top you know uh cliffside right there just to the right of the tower uh you could use that to just simply grapple on top of the tower and then you can drop down into the open bays and just skip the enemies down below entirely so we're going to go ahead and do that So we're going to avoid all these guys. There, there is, you know, other Spartan cores in this area. I think there's at least one. There might be two. There's at least one. Pretty sure there's two, though. Uh, but we'll, again, that's a different video. So there's the tower right there. So we're going to go and just, again, skim the outer edges. If you want to engage in combat, absolutely. Go for it. There's another propaganda tower, so we're going to take that out, get some more valor. Uh, between this mission and the next one, you should be able to get a wasp at that point. Uh, you can't in this one, unfortunately. The, you just you can't get enough valor. I've, I've looked it up. I've tried. Just, there's just not enough there uh, to use it in Pelican Down, which is a shame because it would make this mission significantly easier. Uh, but you cannot do that until the sequence. Which, again, with the sequence, uh, it's not as easy to use 
a wasp because of all the banshees. But as you can see, the bay doors are already open. So all you really need to do is just jump straight on top of the tower itself. I'm just going to go ahead and have some fun here. Why not? Because I'm not going to engage these enemies anyway. Just take take out these enemies at the bottom right here. The If you're feeling guilty about this at all, just keep this in mind. The AA gun's going to blow up anyway and would kill everything in its path. So, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and just grapple right up here. Grapple right to the top. And drop down to the bay and avoid all those other enemies. And now we're in for another extended cutscene with uh, Eshram. So after this, there's only one other AA gun left. Again, you can do these in any order you want to. I chose this particular one simply because the first one I think personally is the most difficult. I think there are more enemies there um, than all the others. The snipers really do kind of get on my nerves specifically. So I tend to go for that one first because if things go wrong, they tend to go wrong there. And that way I haven't wasted so much time in doing a no saves, no deaths run. Uh, and then I sort of go to this tower as sort of a break before the third and final one. Because the third one, as I mentioned before, does have a pair of hunters. There are snipers there too. Uh, it does have a control panel. The control panel there, since, you know, Eshram's, you know, just kind of running his mouth at this point, we can keep talking. Uh, the thing of it is with the third tower is the control panel to unlock the gravity lift is sort of in a cave. And it is guarded by other individuals. Now, if you're not using the scorpion gun to take out the hunters, what I would recommend is kite them away from that area. Uh, I did this for my full campaign and cutscenes video. And that way you can sort of rush, once they're away and they're not actively shooting at you you can simply just run to the control panel and activate it and then head straight to the gravity lift without having to worry about them there are snipers in the area too so just keep your eye out for them but i still consider it the second most difficult one in this area so go ahead and take out that core again this should destroy the anti-air gun go ahead and jump out make sure there are no enemies nearby we're just going to scoot right on past that brute right there and that takes care of the second anti-air gun. The third one is a little bit more of a ways off. So we're going to go ahead and take... Again, I would recommend the non-kosher route here. Just trying to avoid as many enemies as possible. You don't have to do that, obviously, but you can. Uh, just sort of a side note uh, regarding the Spartan cores and Valor and things like that. Uh, if you want, now that selectable missions are a thing, you can go and gather those things on easy and then come back and resume this on legendary. And that's exactly what I did. So in fact, if you didn't notice earlier, I had to check to make sure I was still playing on legendary because I felt like it was so easy. I had never actually upgraded my uh, armor core to its max before. And I feel like that's maybe why I thought it was so simple because I wasn't taking as much damage as I thought I would be. Uh, but yeah, the upgrading that armor core really does help quite a bit. So again, we're just going to try to avoid as many enemies as possible to get, that, to get to that third anti-air gun. And once that air gun is taken out, that airsoft gun, yes, it's, it shoots BBs. Um, once that anti-air gun is taken out, then you have to fight the two Spartan killers. Uh, very unceremoniously. They have no cutscene, unlike the other bosses in, the, in this game. But they're very easy to. And just to sort of go over some tactics ahead of time, if you're not using the Scorpion Gun, uh, it's very easy to grapple the first uh, Spartan Killer and hijack his chopper. It, that sounded dirty. Uh, but if you do that... Uh, you have infinite ammo, and, this, and, this, and the chopper rounds are actually very powerful too. So you can use those to take out the other two, the 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 actual Spartan killers themselves. So that's an option for you. Uh, but if you're using the scorpion gun like I am, it's just simply point and shoot. 
it only takes a few rounds for each one. You just got to keep your distance. There are uh, backup enemies to help them, so just keep that in mind. They do have reinforcements around. Usually at least one ghost, and that guy can be annoying. Trust me, I learned that the hard way. So uh, definitely keep your eye out for those guys as well. Just make sure you're keeping out, uh, keep an eye out on your radar in general. Your radar is much broader in this game than it has been in previous Halo games. So again, we're just going to take this uh, non-kosher path up here and try to take these enemies from the top. Again, there are snipers in this area, so be careful. And there are hunters near the cave currently. If you are not using the scorpion gun, once again, you can kite them away from there if you do not have the weapons to take them out. So that's just something to keep in mind. So even though you're not visually seeing it, and you'll see this in my 2.0 walkthrough, I'm basically, you know, slowly guiding you through it regardless, even if you're not using the scorpion gun. But yes, get a high vantage point. That'll help you out quite a bit. And with the double charge, not double charge, but quick charge on the grapple shot, uh, you should be able to scale the walls here pretty easily. So now we're above the tower right here, the A gun. And I won't lie, briefly here, I actually thought I could do the same thing I did with the last one, which was just simply drop down into the bay and ignore the control panel entirely. Yeah, you can't do that. You actually do have to still unlock it. Uh, the doors won't open until the gravity lift does. So with the control panel, uh, anti-air guns, uh, this method will not work. You can't actually drop into the bay first. But that third one, yes, you can. And so again, watch out for those snipers. There's one right ahead. So we're going to go ahead and deal with this guy. Here in just a minute, I want to get my bearings real quick. Make sure I get a good shot on him. Okay, so there he is right over here. Yeah, mid grapple snipe right there. Mid grapple no scope. I'll take that. So, all right, so we got that guy. Again, there are other snipers in the area too, so just keep an eye out on them. And it's mostly, at least I, as far as I remember anyway, there's no vehicles here. No vehicle based enemies. So you shouldn't have to worry about any ghosts. But yes, there are a few. Uh, jackal snipers and that pair of hunters. Once again, for the shield enemies, use the scorpion gun. If you are not using the scorpion gun, pulse carbine is a nice backup. I hate keep trying to keep reminding people of that, but I got flack in in using uh, the scorpion gun in the tower slash recovery. So I'm just giving you backup options. I have done this without the scorpion gun, but this is the easiest and most efficient way to actually beat this mission on legendary. So. That's the route that I'm taking. The only thing that I'm not using here is Bandana, which I may or may not use for my 2.0 walkthrough. Just because you can do a lot of cool things with Bandana on. Not just in terms of weapons, but also because it affects your armor abilities as well. In a way that benefits you. So that should be the last of the Jackal Snipers. There might be one more in the far corner, but because we're going to stick around here primarily, I don't think you should uh he should be much of a problem those are the two hunters right there once these guys are out we shouldn't have much of an issue there, there might be a couple of jackals inside the structure right there where the control panel actually is but i don't see any other enemies aside from that so give it a second do i see another nope okay so he's not there this time so go ahead and activate the control panel and then just zoom on up there. Oh, I see a jackal right there. Little rascal. And I think you're going to live today. I'm just going to go straight up here. Well, at least until I deactivate the anti-air gun anyway. And then it'll collapse on you and probably crush your skull. And, well, uh, Sarah McLaughlin will, will sing her song and... 
we'll have to donate. So, but anyway, so this is the last Hanta air gun. Once this is taken out, you will be able to confront the two bosses, the Spartan killers. And again, with the Scorpion gun, it should not be much of an issue for you. But again, like I said, if you're not using the Scorpion gun, an alternate strategy is to simply hijack the chopper from the first uh, Spartan killer and then use it to destroy the other two. So now that the uh, core is destroyed, jump out. If you wait here too long, it will kill you. I found that out the hard way too. So I'm basically your, your human shield in this game at this point. All right, so now your objective is to kill, kill the two Spartan killers. They're going to be down here in this basin. The chopper one is usually going to be the first to engage you. And the other one, I believe, has a Ravager. So you can shoot him from a distance, or you can just go ahead and jump straight down. Completely up to you. Basically, the main thing you want to look out here for, aside from the Spartan Killers themselves, obviously, is all of their backup, because they have quite a bit of it. I don't think there are any snipers here, but there are plenty of grunts, and there's at least one ghost riding around. So keep that in mind. Okay, so our chopper friend should be right up here. Yep, there he is. That that was one shot. I, I don't know if it was supposed to happen that way. Maybe it was because he was actually in the vehicle. And when I destroyed the vehicle, it killed him too. Uh, and then our Ravenger friend is over there right behind him. But again, if you're not using the Scorpion gun, the chopper is one of your best weapons here. Very powerful and you have unlimited ammo. Also, it runs other enemies down pretty nicely, too, which is which is very cool. Nice little side benefit. Uh, this other Spartan killer, by the way, does tend to jump around a lot. So if you're not using the Scorpion gun, he likes that. You see where that uh, marker is up in the corner right there? He tends to like to jump up on that structure right there. So now that both of them are down, up, oh, and we have drop pods. But at this point, the mission is actually done. Uh, so you just need to wait for the, the Pelican call at this point. I think that guy has a rocket launcher. Oh, and we have... Huh, I thought Berserker Brutes were annoying enough. Now we have some with shields? Okay. Uh, I have no issue taking out these guys with the Scorpion Gun because why are they in the game? They make no sense at all. And they're annoying. Oh, Lord. Okay, I'll be fair with you. I'll just take you out with the battle rifle. There we go. See? Karma balances out in one way, shape, or form. But yes, at this point, you just have to wait for the uh, call for the Pelican. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and get to the next mission. Whoa, got you. <clears throat> or uh, if you want, uh, you can go ahead and grab the rest of the Spartan cores. Completely up to you. We've already gathered one on this mission. There are four others. Uh, so you can upgrade if you want to... Uh, it may not be a bad idea to do the drop wall just simply because the opening of the sequence can be a bit uh, iffy because they've, they've got multiple snipers as well as uh, Banshees. So it might help you out a little bit and then you can grab the rest of Spartan cores to upgrade the rest of your armor abilities later. But that is Pelican Down on Legendary. No saves, no deaths. So what did you guys think about it? Did you enjoy this mission? I hope this walkthrough helped you out. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the comment section below. And I'd love to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy day to sit down and watch this video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it and benefit from it. And if you did, I hope you consider subscribing for more great content right here on the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you all right back here next time. I want to wish you all a very happy new year and a very happy 2023 coming up. Again, thank you all again. And as always, I'm the Tyrant, signing off.